Hi everyone, welcome. We're down here in my wormery and you can see I've got a couple bins out on the table already. It's my African Nightcrawler systems and the one over here, the older one, is in a vermi bag tote. It's kind of lining the inside of this plastic tub. Here in the older one, I had thought that it might be time to harvest the casting soon to let the worm start just breaking down whatever leftovers and scraps are lingering within. I even, I even went so far last week as to pick out large chunks and just move them into the, the bin that's going to be around even longer, the younger of the two bins, to try to help, um, you know, steer towards that. And then, you know, I started thinking to myself, it wasn't very long ago that I launched this new bin, and it consisted of taking a huge mound of worms and the material that they inhabited in here, and that's part of the reason every now and then I look in here and the material just doesn't seem like it's stacking up the way it would for a bin its age. Um, and that just tells me there's a little bit more room remaining in here. So the whole thing of trying to steer it towards migration just based on its age is kind of irrelevant. I think I've got space in here to keep going. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this thing back on the uh, feeding schedule. It's been three weeks since this bin hasn't been fed. And even last week, one week ago when this bin was last fed, they had both not received anything for two weeks prior to that. So this one for two weeks without feeding, got back on the feeding schedule last week. This one's back on now. I, I like the idea of just being flexible. And if I change my mind, then I change my mind. So I've um, shuffled things around a bit. So we're putting both African Nightcrawler systems back on the feeding schedule. And uh, the other thing that's important in these bins is a little something new that happened last week, which um, was an attempt to try to control mites in the bins. I had tried starving the bins without feeding for weeks and then I um, left off these plastic coverings that are on top to let things air out and um, dry. I think things definitely helped. There was a much fewer number of mites in there. But the final, hopefully finishing blow that I took was to sprinkle in um, some lime, some pulverized dolomite lime. There must have been about this much in the bag, maybe not that much. It wasn't that full. Um, you know, maybe a handful per container, a good generous handful of lime per container to try to balance out the pH where pH was hopefully the last thing that was making this into a favorable, comfortable place for the mites. So between drying the, drying the bins for weeks, withholding feedings, um, and now trying to affect the pH to a certain degree, I'm hoping that now that we're coming back in here, we're not going to see mites, but we won't know until we get in there. So why don't we get started? Let's go. So we'll begin with the older of the two bins, the one that's not received food in three weeks. In fact, had some food removed a week ago. So this is the bin that deserves it the most because it's been withheld the food the longest. And I believe it probably has a greater worm population in it than the other bin too. Probably not by much. I would think that they're almost the same actually. Maybe that's a mistake. One worm, one worm coming up to take advantage of the recirculating moisture within the bin. All right, buddy, back down into the bed. Let's see how things look in here. There were, I don't think there were many castings on these last week when this was put back into the bin after we came in here. So a lot of that was probably just freshly deposited in the past week. Last week, all we really did in here was add the lime, cover back up. We also left a little bit of another interesting uh, material in here. This is diatomaceous earth. The idea here was that if there's any sort of creepy crawlies or insects that we don't want, maybe they'll stumble in that stuff and it'll, um, you know, be their demise. Don't know if it's really doing anything, but whatever. It's not causing a problem, so I'm not going to worry about it. We'll just leave it be. We'll put it back in the way it is and uh, let it continue as is. Maybe it's helping a little with something. Who knows? Wow, the material really is nice in here. But there are all kinds of little scraps of stuff. If it had not been for that plastic covering causing that recirculation, things would be, you know, really dry, um, arid up here on top, and you wouldn't see worms right near the surface. You wouldn't see all these castings along the top of the surface either. So, you know, the worms are definitely covering a lot more real estate with the recirculating moisture going on. I was trying to think, like, where do we dig in? It doesn't seem to matter because there was no feeding that we're checking in on, nothing like that. It was just my... Um, mites mites we were trying to figure out if it's um if it's possible to reduce their numbers there's a fairly dark cocoon all right you know what sometimes watching it on the playback of the video is the easiest way to see them so let's push some of this aside and check out some concentrations of little white spots and 
hopefully it's either lime or grit but if it's moving then it's mites You know, like, a, like last time, it's so cool because when you just sort of let things sit because you want to let the camera capture things and, you know, play it back fast later, you know, you find yourself just staring down into the hole and then it's kind of cool because you actually do start noticing things that you, you don't notice when you're just moving stuff around and rummaging around quickly because, you know, I could see cocoons. I don't know if the camera's picking them up, but I can see a couple right there. There's one right down there on the bottom, pretty well lit. You know, uh, they're just... Uh, so much more visible when you can just you know stare and you know watch for a while and uh and just notice them you know because they, they do blend in pretty good some of them just have that slightly more you know vivid oops color this one's got like kind of an orangish color very some of them are very dark you know one down here is like just blends in perfectly with the castings just pick them out you know because they're a little bit shiny and they're spherical but you know that's kind of to be expected I just you know always get caught off guard when I notice a bunch of them and then I just get you know a little bit excited this is really cool too I mean look at these itsy bitsy little tiny baby worms I just pushed a little bit of material aside and I could already see some of the, the little critters who, uh, who come out of those cocoons these guys are still pretty darn young they're very small Oh, I only saw two in the beginning. Now a couple more have snuck out from under the uh, material. I'm sure they don't appreciate the dry glove, right? All right, so the coverings were doing a pretty good job, even out here on the corner, I must say. I mean, th things are a bit dry, but you don't have to come inboard much to reach nice, um, damp, comfortable material. You can even tell just the worms hanging out right there is evidence that the almost the entire contents of the bin are pretty much fair game for these worms because they're uh, they're cruising the whole space breaking down materials that we um, we've given them over all these weeks you know I um I did come down here with some coffee filters but I'm gonna save these for the younger bin that we know is gonna be around for a while and the I think that what we'll do is uh, collect up some oops some leaf scraps and paper scraps I would think at this point most of this is gonna be paper scraps I like to place the feedings on top of um, some bedding because the bedding then starts to soak in. Yeah, I mean, the, the bedding will start to soak in the moisture. And even after the food's been depleted, there's going to be a whole bunch of, you know, juices and um, stuff to help the paper become a really appealing place for the worms to go to. So maybe even some of this dry stuff from out on the edges might be a good material to dump down in under the food. Let it get hydrated with some of the melting veggies dumping their moisture down. So I don't think it's going to take too much to collect a few more chunks of decent bedding. In my red wiggler bins, I've been pocket feeding. I've been feeding in the corners. And then each week moving that feeding zone to a new corner. It's been going on for about a month now in my red wigglers. But here in the night crawlers, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to feed down the middle like I usually do. Material is really nice. Flakes apart really nice in most cases. Hmm. Let's keep, uh, let's keep stirring this dry stuff that's out on the edges around too. Because we're almost ready to dump in the food and move on to the next bin. Because I don't think we need too much more bedding material than that, do we? Have we started all? Oh, look at that. Nice big pile of wormies hanging out there. Yeah, there's a pretty good size of a population in here, it seems. I think running this bag within the um, within this plastic bus box helps a lot. Originally, I had run this... Vermi bag mini in a wooden frame where all 
of the fabric surfaces on the outside were exposed to the air. And even though it you know holds the moisture in quite nicely, it does have a little bit of a breathability aspect to it. It's one of the selling points of the container and of using a bag fabric. But you got to also cope with the uh, loss of moisture that occurs as a result of that too. So I think placing the bag inside the, the um, tub has really helped tremendously. The material's just been so perfect in here. I've got the wooden frame still. It's all, you know, a complete structure that I can mount this bag into at any time. And I might go back to trying it again. Let's see what other measures I can take to try to um, create favorable moisture within my container. Even if it is a bag that's suspended in the air. Although even on my Vermi Bag Mini, I've got a um, I've got a little bit of bubble wrap sort of going around the entire bag so as to try to hold in some of its moisture. <laughs> okay, got a couple nice handfuls of paper. It's not going to be a very big feeding. It's going to be, um, I guess, my typical portion, which is about two handfuls per container. I had actually made a little bit of a um, distinction between the stuff that's on this side of the container. I think this is this is somewhat smaller stuff that will break down a little bit more readily. It's just peels, basically, of the coral rob. And here, too, just um, shreds of the peels of uh, carrots. All stuff that I believe should um, break down quite readily. It was for the other younger bin where we know there's going to be some additional time um, for it to get broken down. Stuff like the more tough stem and these probably tougher little roots and stuff. So we'll put that into the younger bin where we know there's going to be plenty of time for that stuff to break down. Perhaps even this rotted tip can just go with the more tough stuff over here. So I think we've divvied this out pretty evenly. And you know what? Let's go ahead and give these... Guys, just a couple more pinches since this is the bin that has not been fed in a month. I bet you we'll find leftovers in the other bin, but it's not a surprise. There's really nothing in here for these guys. <laughs> so they're going to be happy, that's for sure. All right. That's a pretty nice portion of coffee, too, but I want to save a little for the other bin. And I think we can get things covered up. And, you know... If there's going to be mites in here, so be it. Maybe I'll do another dose of lime or who knows. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about it. Maybe they'll go away on their own. I don't know. Um, but I'm always willing to try new stuff, especially if the um, price of doing so is relatively low or nothing. Okay. All such nice material. All such a great moisture level. What is this? Some sort of a stone or a pit out of a plum. <laughs> Let's get that down there in the feeding area as well. Okay. As for the diatomaceous earth, I don't know what it's going to do. I mean, even before I pulled these little, oops. I mean, even before I pulled these little landing pads off, I when I looked, peeked behind one of them, I saw an insect crawling on the wall. A flying insect so I'm not sure if this stuff is even really doing much of anything I can see tracks of worms here there was just some fresh castings on that one when we first popped our heads in here and I didn't make any mention of it I don't know if it's just because it was some sort of a easy convenient way to hike up that to get onto the top paper or if there was something about that piece of paper that was attracting them it was probably more um, the first thing <laughs> they probably just climbed on that so that they can get up on here eh, whatever I think as far as the worms are concerned it's just another mineral um, within their diet and within their environment but for any bugs that stumble on it it becomes um, something that actually pierces through their exoskeletons and ultimately causes them to dehydrate I believe is the way this stuff works. The diatomaceous earth, microscopic shards of uh, very hard material. Okay, I want to cover things up nicely here to 
keep that moisture in. Last week we left little openings there to let that paper stay dry for the sake of the diatomaceous earth. Um, I think we're better off by creating a good damp environment in as much of the space as we can. So, all right, let's get the other one fed. Okay, now here in the, um, in the plastic tub, we're in a slightly smaller container. I think, you know, size-wise, they're about the same. These are just shallower. Here, the plastic is actually um, covering a piece of cardboard. So they're connected to one another. Since it's sort of a rigid, flat surface, I can't fold it in half to keep the moisture enclosed. So it's just safer, I think, to try to evict these little guys. I mean, I don't think that the material on here is going to dry so quickly that it could become a hazard for them. But I just wouldn't want the, um, the exposed bright lighting situation to suddenly cause them to want to walk off that piece of material and off into a, you know, fairly dangerous dry place. Man, this paper is really getting tattered. Lots of worm castings, lots of worm traffic. Ever since we put the plastic back on here and this thing started getting nice and damp again, you can see the worms have been coming up to take advantage of it. You know, and I believe... What we're probably already seeing right up here on the surface is mites, if I'm not mistaken. You know, once again, just from taking the time to sort of slow down and just gaze down into the bin. Right away I started seeing, you know, two cocoons right next to each other. Um, I don't know. This over here, to me, somehow seemed like a, uh, another sign of something we'd been observing and sort of tracking as a little bit of a problem recently is these worms falling apart, breaking apart. And I thought I had only seen that in the other container. But if I start seeing it in here too, I wonder if it's some sort of a situation going around within my bins i don't know something to keep an eye on luckily it's not as prevalent just one worm this time but in the past we've seen evidence of chunks of worms in multiple places on top of the paper making me a little bit worried so maybe it's um maybe it's nothing maybe it is just a situation that's um fading away the prevalence of it certainly is um much less than it was a few weeks ago Man, this paper really is tattered, I must say. But I like it, you know, it's seasoned, if you will. Seems like a place that the worms are going to want to hang out on. And they, they clearly are hanging out on it. So it seems like a shame to just blend it into the material and use it as bedding if it's such a popular spot. Try to keep it as one item for as long as possible. Here we um, have evidence of where we last fed. This is the feeding zone indicator. Something we forgot to do in the other one, show where we last fed by placing a coffee filter there. But this is just here to remind us that last time we fed, it was right here in the middle. Maybe I'll shoot back into the vermi bag tote and put a coffee filter down to show where we last fed. Here too, we can do something similar. You know, we could try to round up some of this scattered uh, paper material off the top surface, maybe even take this um, pit, plum pit, and throw it down in under the food. But here we're not going to go hunting around, not, not so much for a collection of bedding to put under the feeding. Here we're going to actually um, bundle the food in additional bedding, because this bin I think is going to be around for a little while. It's um, definitely not deep. Well, I feel some stuff right down at the bottom too. Chunks of Banana peel and mango seed husk. <laughs> Something else here. This must be the remainder of an avocado. Just shape the shape of it and the, the texture of the shell. You could tell what it is. Man, we still got so many creepy crawlies in here.
you know, to the end of hopefully maybe reducing the number of mites in here, I suppose I've always got that option to, you know, remove any sort of piece of food that they clearly um, are nuts about, like this avocado and its shell. I mean, there's mites, but they're clearly concentrated on specific items. You know, this banana peel too, for example, I don't know, definitely got mites on it. Does it go? Does it stay? Huh. Whatever. I've got an outdoor composting bin. Maybe I'll just drop them in there. <laughs> Alright, so we've created a nice little collection of, you know, scraps of bedding and paper and stuff like that. A little uh, familiar material to place down into the feeding area along with the fresh food. The avocado pit hmm I don't know we'll see what happens it doesn't seem that bad we'll keep it <laughs> doesn't seem like we're gonna be able to remove that many mites just by taking that away just some of this paper too you know lots of mites eh. got some stems here from tomato I believe avocado pit some of the leftovers from previous feedings that is gonna stay and continue but maybe the other approach we can take is something I think we've already done in the past too, which is just to scoop out stuff that is clearly um, a haven for the mites, whatever. A lot of people have commented about the mites too, and I appreciate all the feedback and input everyone's provided so far about you know the fact that the mites really aren't um, that much of a problem. You know, it is annoying to see them in there. <laughs> especially when they're in large numbers, but they're helping with the breakdown process. They're not bothering the worms. And, you know, maybe there's just time to deal with them later. <laughs> it's not like everything else in life. So, yeah, you know, let's just scoop those out. I'll place those in my outdoor worm bin or my outdoor compost bin or composting barrel, whatever you want to call it. And at least it'll be able to continue there along the same lines, just getting broken down in a different location now. Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of leftovers here. I saw this little piece of tomato that was only placed in here last week. That was a transplant from the other bin. <laughs> I remember it. Okay, we've created a good amount of space down here for today's feeding. Let's, let's load it up into little burritos for them like we said we would. All kinds of yummy stuff in here for them. Got the makings for another one in here, right? Hopefully. Very nice. So yeah, these guys got fed last week. They were probably really appreciative of that food. <laughs> and I think some of the scraps that we noticed today were food, but they were like older bits of food, you know? Um, so maybe they actually did away with whatever they were given last week already, which is good. Always good to see. I mean, yeah, you don't have to go far. You could see the material throughout the bin is in really nice shape. Got a nice moisture content to it. Worms pretty much everywhere. Lots of baby worms. A couple scraps of food from here and there as I make my way through. But here we're getting a little chance to inspect through the material in the bin. And moisture out here looks really nice too. A good prevalence of, you know, scraps of paper and different types of bedding materials. I mean, who knows, maybe this bin is just young enough that that stuff goes right back to its origination. Some sort of a stem. Oops, I don't wanna bury all this mite-ridden stuff. I'll just take this outside <laughs> and add them to the outdoor composting barrel where it's very cold right now, actually, you know? Hmm, that would be kind of cruel because right now there's about a foot of snow inside that barrel. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with these guys? Well, they're mites. Jeez Louise. If they want to burrow down through the snow, down into the bin, and make themselves at home, then they could. Eh, maybe I'll dig down into there a little bit just to give them a head start. <laughs> Who would want to be that cruel? Ugh, all right. How am I doing? A lot of times I just use how much um, material is sticking to my glove as sort of a, a gauge to determine if 
the bin that I just worked in is extremely damp or if it's very dry. Here we're seeing a good amount of moisture. And in my younger bins, I like it that way. In my older bins, I like to see things a little drier, a little bit more flaky, a little bit more fluid or whatever you want to call it. But here, when there's you know still chunks of bedding and all kinds of whatnot all over the place, uh, it is kind of expected that it's going to be kind of lumpy and chunky. And it'll all break down over time. Look <laughs> at this piece of paper. It's just barely held together. That's why I'm trying to be so careful with it. I don't want to tear it. Oh, geez. You know what? Here I am once again. I think close enough that I could still backtrack. A lot of times I refer to the bin being covered and me not wanting it to, at that point, backtrack to cover a missing step. But... The plastic wasn't on yet, so there was still one more cover. I wasn't covered up yet. I was only in the process of covering up. <laughs> Before I realized that I almost forgot the coffee. I can imagine some people out there are watching this thinking to themselves, there he goes again. <laughs> Let's call that a recovery. How does that sound? Look at the bright side. I always forget the coffee. It's one of the weirdest feelings, taking stuff back upstairs, stuff that you had intended to get get composting <laughs> it gets left out because you spaced out all right nice recovery <laughs> maybe I should start doing this stuff live I could like read all the people's comments and then they could uh, keep me on track <laughs> I have to worry less about forgetting steps and missing things all right so we've managed to scrape off a whole bunch of material off my glove here rather have it in the bin than go down the drain when I rinse off my glove so that's all the cleanup I've got to do I guess I'll clean this tray after I've relocated these little guys um, but I'll do all that after the camera's been turned off because you know clean up and put away that's not fun but before I go let me just really quickly say thank you thanks so much for watching uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did please remember to leave me a thumbs up that's always really appreciated if you, uh, if you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Bye now.